Word defibrillator for today, where we trust in God for a word from within the Word. Hebrews 13, keeping in the Amplified Version. And we're going to go back to verse 15. Through Him, therefore, let us constantly and at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the first fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify His name. So that's kind of a a proper praise. Through him, therefore, let us constantly and at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of the lips. So a lip, the the heart of a person who's thankfully acknowledging and confessing and glorifying God's name, that's going to be the fruit of his lips. So if you're, wherever your heart is, that's what your mouth is going to speak of. So if you have a thankful heart, the fruit of your lips is going to be that. Okay, here is the little bit of a twist. Stand by for this. Do not forget or neglect to do kindness and good, to be generous and distribute and contribute to the needy of the church as an embodiment and proof of fellowship. Hold on a second. If you are proving that you're fellowshipping as a church, then you will be contributing to the needy of the church And you will be generous. Generous is not just meeting the standard. Generous is beyond what is required. And not just taking care of one thing, but of many. So be generous and distribute and contribute to the needy of the church as an embodiment and proof of fellowship. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Now that's a sacrifice. He is saying that when you are going to be kind and good and generous to people, to the needy, sometimes it's a sacrifice. That you are giving up that what you want and what you need to be able to bless somebody else. as proof of fellowship. And this is within the church and taking care of others in the church. So maybe, yeah, you're not going to have the chocolate for you today. You're going to buy chocolate for somebody else today. And I always say that if you're going to bless somebody with groceries, always throw in a chocolate. Because people are needy, they always just have the basics. And the chocolate is just that extra kiss in the cheek. Also this one, obey your spiritual leaders, owl, and submit to them, continually recognizing their authority over you. Keeping in mind, irrespective of what you think of your authority, the Bible does say that God places that authority over you as what he feels is necessary for you at this moment in time. So whether you appreciate them or not, the fact is he is requiring you to submit to them and continually recognize their authority over you, for they are constantly keeping watch over your souls. And that's what they should be doing. So you as a pastor or spiritual authority, you guys need to make sure that you're keeping watch over the souls of your people and guarding their spiritual welfare as men who will have to render an account of their trust. So they are held accountable to do their job as well. doesn't mean that they get away with it just because you're doing yours. So obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them continually recognizing their authority over you, for they are constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual welfare. That is one of the earmarks, the manifestations of a spiritual leader. As men who will have to render an account of their trust, do your part too. Let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning. For what would it be profitable to you either? Very, very important. Me being in my position and a spiritual leader, my word has it got tough at times. It really seriously has. And it's hard. And there's been really bad days where even though it's going to turn out for the good, God, I hope you're going to pitch. Really do. And sometimes it is quite difficult to continually be faithful and guarding people's spiritual welfare and keeping a watch over their souls, especially when they don't want to. Yet they come to your church and they tell everybody else they want to. But as soon as you as their spiritual leader start to pray into certain areas and you give them some advice and they don't want to listen to what you have to say, it does become tough. And there's many a times we leaders, and I'm just, my heart is out for you at this moment in time. It's a really lonely place. 
where you will do everything in your power to serve your flock, those people who God has brought before you, and boy, do they not reciprocate. But I am speaking to that flock now, all of us as members of that church, is we need to be faithful. And we need to be obedient to our spiritual leaders. Now, you might not trust them as a person, but trust the God within them. And I could tell you this, he has used donkeys to make people pay attention. And you might think that person's a bit of a, a donkey. And you know what? God can still speak through them. Everything happens in our lives with God's, no, well, nothing happens without God's commission or permission. So don't look at the person, even though you might not like them, listen to the message. Because the message is still coming from the Father. He's just using that person to grow you, whatever the reason may be. But listen to what the Father's trying to tell you. There is that message, even though you might not like it yourself. And remember, Jesus feels the same way. Is he not your spiritual authority? And shouldn't we be submitting to him continually, recognizing his authority over us? For he constantly is keeping watch over our souls and guarding our spiritual welfare. And he will be held into account. And he's accountable to his father. And he's definitely doing his part. Because in verse 17, the second part says, Now do your part. Let them do this with gladness. Let the Lord know and understand that if it was just for you, it was worth it. I'm like that. I have that one or two people in my life I'm really blessed but there will be just that one person that you'll do it all over again for. If it was for that person, there have been moments when it's been tough, and I go, Lord, just give me one so that I stay faithful. I just let it be with it. And it is. It's like that surfer waiting for that fantastic wave because of that one wave that was so awesome, and he waits for the next. And that's what carries me through. So why don't you be that one person this morning? Why don't you just be that one person that, Maybe phone. Phone that leader. That spiritual authority. And say, you know what? Just got to tell you, thank you very much for taking God over my soul. And guarding my spiritual well-being. And thank you for praying for me. Thank you for being obedient to God's call. And if they, would you be in that position? Would you be fellowshipping with those people? Would your heart have been saved? If that person didn't say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. And stay faithful to the call. Hebrews 13, verse 16. Do not forget or neglect to do kindness and good, to be generous and distribute and contribute to the needy of the church as an embodiment and proof of fellowship. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, continually recognizing their authority over you. For they are constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual welfare as men who will have to render an account of their trust. Do your part too. Let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning for what would not be profitable to you either. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word and I thank you for your word, Jesus Christ. I thank you that he did what he did to rescue us. And Father, your whole heart is for us to be able to walk with you in the garden again, to have fellowship with you and to be restored to you. And Father, we thank you that the word is there to serve and protect us as a people and as a body. And Father, we submit to that word and we submit to that authority that you've placed over us. And Father, I pray for those who are just out there on their own, that they are feeling lonely, they are feeling discouraged, and they've been hurt by leaders of the church. I pray for those people, Father. I pray for your peace that surpasses all understanding to guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. But, Father, I also pray that they submit to an authority that serves and protects them for their well-being so that their souls are guarded and their spiritual welfare is guarded. I thank, for, thank you for that, Father. Give them that spiritual mother or father that can, that can cover them and make sure that they, their souls are protected. And follow for those leaders that have been hurt by the church, Father. Those spiritual authorities that have really tried it, Father. That didn't even put up their hand but were appointed, Father. That are tired. I pray for restoration for them, Father. Infilling, a refreshing, Father. That they can have the appointment with gladness. No sighing and no groaning. Thank you, Father. For you. 
Thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding to God, our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the healing of hearts, minds and souls, Father, and a refreshing of spirit. Thank you for grace, mercy, your protection that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we do condemn as your servants. Amen.